Amidst the ongoing immigration challenges faced by the Joe Biden administration, the city of New York finds itself grappling with its own pressing immigration concerns. As officials say, the system cannot continue to house the thousands of migrants still arriving in New York. In response, the state of New York has taken proactive measures by deploying the National Guard to expedite the asylum process. Now, we have for you new footage of the National Guard being deployed in New York City. New York National Guard will deploy an additional 150 members to support the asylum seeker mission. Chaos in New York. In the heart of the bustling metropolis of New York City, a crisis of epic proportions has been unfolding for about two years. It all began with a wave of migrants, more than 150,000 strong, arriving on the city's doorstep in less than two years. The city, ill-prepared for such an influx, found itself grappling with the chaos and fury that ensued. As the numbers continued to rise, the city's ability to house and care for these migrants was stretched to its limits. Desperate for shelter, many found themselves sleeping on floors or sidewalks. The cost of this crisis has been staggering with the city's coffers hemorrhaging billions of dollars in an attempt to address the growing needs of the migrants. However, amidst the chaos, missed opportunities and mistakes made by the city, administration have only exacerbated the situation. The city's response, or lack thereof, has left many questioning the competence and effectiveness of those in power. New York Governor Kathy Hochul then took a bold step to address the ongoing migrant crisis in the city. In an announcement, she revealed that an additional 150 National Guard troops will be deployed to support asylum seekers who have arrived in New York City. That coveted work authorization, that's their ticket to the American dream. So you'll be helping them get a job, helping them support themselves, helping them leave these shelters. With the existing National Guard personnel already playing a significant role in the process, the additional deployment of 150 troops will further bolster their efforts. Another crucial factor contributing to the decision is the strain on New York City's resources and two relief centers assisting with the city's influx of migrants. However, the sheer number of asylum seekers has overwhelmed the existing infrastructure, necessitating the deployment of more troops. Currently, there are 1,900 National Guard personnel on site, spread across 51 hotels. This brings the total number of National Guard members dedicated to addressing the issue to 2,050, according to Governor Hochul's office. To effectively manage the cases of asylum seekers, an additional 250 National Guard members will be assigned to case management. This move aims to streamline the process and ensure that migrants can file the correct paperwork and obtain legal work status. The state has invested a staggering $50 million in case management. These funds will help migrants navigate the complex system and ultimately ultimately leave taxpayer-funded shelters, easing the burden on the city's resources. The need for this deployment became apparent in May, when Governor Hochul issued an emergency order to address the expected influx of migrants after the expiration of the Title 42 immigration policy. The situation intensified in August, when New York City Mayor Eric Adams called for federal assistance due to Texas Governor Greg Abbott's continued transportation of asylum seekers via bus. The collaboration between state and federal authorities is crucial in managing the crisis effectively. One of the key factors contributing to the crisis is the global upheaval that has displaced millions of people from their homes. New York City has become a magnet for those seeking a better life. However, the lack of legal work opportunities for migrants has left them in a state of limbo, unable to fully integrate into society and contribute to the economy. Adding fuel to the fire is a local rule that requires the city to offer shelter to every homeless person. While well-intentioned, this rule has inadvertently contributed to the overwhelming number of migrants seeking assistance. The city's resources, already stretched thin, have been further strained by the sheer volume of individuals in need. Compounding the crisis are the questionable decisions made by the city administration. In their haste to address the situation, the city has signed expensive contracts with vendors accused of mistreating migrants. These vendors have further exploited the vulnerable population, adding to their suffering. Mayor Eric Adams, at the helm of the city during this tumultuous period, has faced intense criticism for his handling of the crisis. His antagonistic approach towards state and federal officials has only served to alienate potential allies, leaving the city to fend for itself. The lack of coordination and cooperation between different levels of government has hindered progress and left migrants in a state of uncertainty. One of the most pressing issues is the city's slow response in helping migrants file for asylum and find permanent housing. The prolonged stays in overcrowded shelters have taken a toll on the mental and physical well-being of the migrants. The city's failure to provide timely 
family assistance has only prolonged their suffering and delayed their integration into society. The arrival of over 100,000 migrants in New York City over the past year alone has created a crisis that has strained the city's shelter system, schools, and budget. Desperate for a solution, the city has resorted to offering plane and bus tickets to migrants, encouraging them to leave town. However, this approach has its own challenges, as some migrants are forced to leave shelters every 30 days and reapply if they want to return. This constant uncertainty and instability only add to the already precarious situation faced by migrants. President Biden's decision to grant special status to many Venezuelans, allowing them to apply for work permits, has provided some relief. However, Mayor Eric Adams no longer expects help from the federal government, leaving the city to grapple with the crisis on its own. The strain on resources and the dwindling patience of New Yorkers have taken a toll on the mayor's approval rating, which has dropped to a mere 28%. For many migrants, the first hurdle is finding a place to call home. With nearly 70,000 individuals currently residing in New York City homeless shelters, the competition for limited resources is fierce. The city, overwhelmed by the sheer number of migrants, has missed opportunities to help them leave the shelters and find more permanent housing solutions. One of the largest migrant shelters, located on Randall's Island, has become a hub of activity and resilience. Within its walls, an ecosystem has emerged, with barbers, vendors, and chefs offering their services to fellow migrants. This makeshift community provides a sense of camaraderie and support amidst the chaos. It is a testament to the human spirit's ability to adapt and find solace even in the most challenging circumstances. As migrants strive to establish themselves in the city, the need to earn money becomes paramount. However, the lack of legal work opportunities poses a significant obstacle. Many find themselves in precarious employment situations, working under the table or in exploitative conditions. The dream of a better life often comes at the cost of sacrificing their rights and dignity. Seeking legal ways to stay in the city becomes a complex and arduous process for migrants. The city's slow response in helping them file for asylum and navigate the legal system only prolongs their stay in shelters. The uncertainty of their future weighs heavily on their minds as they grapple with the fear of deportation and the desire for stability. As the New York City migrant crisis continues to unfold, one glaring issue becomes apparent, the lack of planning and coordination in the city's response. The challenges faced by the city and its residents are exacerbated by a disjointed and inefficient system that fails to effectively address the needs of migrants. From the onset of the crisis, there has been a lack of foresight in anticipating the scale and complexity of the situation. The city was ill-prepared for the influx of migrants, resulting in a scramble to find suitable housing and resources. This lack of planning has left both migrants and city officials overwhelmed and struggling to keep up with the demands of the crisis. Coordination between different government agencies and departments has been sorely lacking. The absence of a unified approach has led to confusion and inefficiency in the delivery of services. Migrants find themselves caught in a bureaucratic maze, unsure of where to turn for assistance. The lack of clear communication and collaboration between stakeholders has hindered progress and left many feeling abandoned. Migrant Surge in the South as the migrant surge continues along the Texas-Mexico border, mirroring challenges faced elsewhere, such as in New York, a stark difference in approach emerges. While New York adopts a more compassionate stance towards the issue, Governor Abbott of Texas has opted for a considerably more hardline approach. The situation at the southern border has escalated significantly, with unauthorized crossings reaching levels reminiscent of the surge witnessed last spring. The Biden administration is confronted with the formidable task of managing this influx of migrants navigating complex humanitarian and logistical considerations amidst heightened scrutiny and public debate. The number of migrants apprehended in a single day by the U.S. Border Patrol approached an estimated $9,000 on Wednesday, according to officials who declined to be identified to discuss preliminary data. Rural areas of southern Arizona, including the greater Tucson region, as well as South Texas, have seen large increases in migration. Border Patrol agents in Eagle Pass, Texas, on Wednesday swiftly vetted and processed about 2,500 migrants taken into custody at the border, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. The enforcement involved shutting down rail and vehicle traffic at multiple border crossings in the area. One of the primary reasons behind the surge in unauthorized border crossings is the economic disparity between the United States and the countries from which migrants are fleeing. Many individuals and families are seeking better economic opportunities, higher wages, and improved living conditions. The allure of the American dream is a powerful motivator, pushing people 
people to take the risk of crossing the border illegally. Another significant factor driving the surge in unauthorized border crossings is the rampant violence and insecurity in the migrants' home countries. Countries like Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador are plagued by high levels of gang violence, drug cartels, and political instability. Faced with the constant threat of violence and the lack of safety, many individuals and families feel compelled to flee their homes in search of a safer environment. Corruption and a lack of effective governance in the migrants' home countries also contribute to the surge in unauthorized border crossings. Widespread corruption undermines the rule of law, hinders economic development, and exacerbates social inequality. The lack of trust in institutions and the perception that there is no hope for a better future drive many individuals to seek refuge in the United States. In recent years, the impact of natural disasters and climate change has become a significant driver of migration. Central American countries, in particular, have been hit hard by hurricanes, droughts, and other extreme weather events. These disasters destroy homes, devastate crops, and disrupt livelihoods, leaving many with no choice but to flee their homes in search of safety and stability. Family reunification is a powerful motivator for unauthorized border crossings. Many migrants have family members already living in the United States, and they are willing to take the risk of crossing the border illegally to be reunited with their loved ones. The desire to provide a better future for their children and to escape the challenges they face in their home countries drives them to undertake the dangerous journey. Perception plays a significant role in the surge of unauthorized border crossings. Changes in immigration policies and rhetoric from the Biden administration have been interpreted by some as a more lenient approach to immigration. This perception has led to a belief that now is the opportune time to attempt to cross the border illegally, contributing to the surge in unauthorized crossings. In response to the surge in unauthorized border crossings, the Biden administration has implemented several strategies to address the crisis. These strategies aim to balance border security with humanitarian concerns and create a more orderly immigration system. Let's explore the key strategies being implemented. The administration has announced an expansion of deportations to include more families, sending a clear signal that children cannot be used to sidestep the immigration process. This approach aims to deter unauthorized crossings by ensuring that there are consequences for those who enter the country illegally. Additionally, the administration has dedicated a surge of 800 active duty Department of Defense personnel to support Customs and Border Protection CBP, in their efforts to secure the border. While expanding deportations, the Biden administration is also expanding work permit access and deportation protections for certain groups. The administration announced the expansion of Temporary Protected Status TPS, for Venezuelans, making it available to 472,000 individuals. This move aims to provide eligible immigrants with the opportunity to work legally while denying those with invalid claims the ability to remain in the US. The administration has also implemented parole processes for Cubans, Haitians, Venezuelans, and Nicaraguans, further streamlining the decision-making process. The administration has adopted a dual-track approach to address the surge in unauthorized border crossings. This approach combines enforcement measures with humanitarian efforts. The administration has expanded deportation processing, ensuring that those with invalid claims are swiftly removed through Immigration and Customs Enforcement's Family Expedited Removal Management firm program. On the other hand, the administration has sought to provide legal avenues for migrants, paroling them through legal processes and working with Mexico to accept the return of non-Mexican citizens. Recognizing the transnational nature of the migrant crisis, the Biden administration has prioritized collaboration with international partners. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas has engaged in discussions with leaders from countries such as Honduras to explore collaborative efforts in reducing unauthorized or irregular migration. This approach acknowledges the need for a comprehensive and coordinated response to address the root causes of migration and enhance border security. The surge in unauthorized border crossings has put a strain on the immigration system, leading to backlogs and capacity issues. To address this, the administration is working to expedite immigration court cases and improve the efficiency of the asylum process. Additionally, CBP has released migrants in coordination with local authorities, ensuring that they are vetted and processed while maintaining contracts for transportation and medical support. The administration is also working to establish new facilities, such as the soft-sided facility in the Tucson area, to accommodate the increased number of migrants. To address these limitations by existing legal frameworks, the administration has called for legislative reforms to overhaul the immigration system. President Biden has requested $4 billion in additional funding for border security, emphasizing the need for comprehensive solutions. However, these efforts have faced opposition from Republicans, who argue that the administration's policies are too welcoming towards migrants.
migrants. By implementing these strategies, the Biden administration aims to strike a balance between border security and humanitarian concerns. Many Republicans and critics argue that the Biden administration's policies are not doing enough to secure the U.S. borders. They claim that the administration's approach, including the expansion of deportation protections and parole processes, sends a message of leniency and encourages unauthorized border crossings. Critics argue that stronger border security measures are necessary to deter migrants from attempting to cross the border illegally. Immigration advocates and some Democrats argue that the Biden administration is not doing enough to overhaul immigration laws. They believe that the current system is outdated and in need of comprehensive reforms. Critics argue that the administration should prioritize legislative efforts to create a more efficient and humane immigration system, including providing a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants and addressing the root causes of migration. The Biden administration's approach to the migrant crisis has also faced criticism regarding humanitarian concerns. Some argue that the expansion of deportations and expedited removal processes may limit access to legal resources and hinder the ability of migrants to make valid asylum claims. Critics argue that the administration should prioritize the protection of human rights and ensure that migrants have access to legal representation and due process. The perception of policy changes and rhetoric from the Biden administration has played a significant role in the surge of unauthorized border crossings. Critics argue that the perception of a more lenient approach to immigration has created a sense of urgency among migrants, leading to an increase in unauthorized crossings. They believe that the administration should communicate a clear message that unauthorized border crossings will not be tolerated. The handling of the migrant crisis has become a highly politicized issue, with Republicans accusing President Biden of supporting policies that are too welcoming towards migrants. They argue that the surge in unauthorized border crossings is a direct result of the administration's approach and that stronger enforcement measures are necessary. This political opposition has created a contentious debate surrounding the administration's handling of the crisis. The Biden administration has faced criticism regarding budgetary constraints and the limitations they impose on addressing the migrant crisis. Critics argue that the administration's request for additional funding for border security is insufficient to address the scale of the issue. They believe that more resources should be allocated to enhance border infrastructure, increase personnel, and improve the capacity to process migrants efficiently. Governor Abbott's response. In the ongoing battle over border security, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has emerged as a fierce defender of his state's right to protect its borders. With a surge in migrant crossings at the U.S. southern border, Abbott has taken a bold stance against the Biden administration, accusing President Biden of shirking his responsibility to enforce the laws of the United States. Let's dive deeper into Governor Abbott's claims and the measures Texas has taken to secure its borders. At a press conference held in the border town of Eagle Pass, Texas Texas, Governor Abbott stood alongside a coalition of GOP governors united in their demand for President Biden to address the escalating issue of migrant crossings. Abbott wasted no time in calling out the president, stating that he had completely abdicated and abandoned his responsibility to enforce the laws of the United States. Joe Biden, it is your turn now, your obligation, your duty to follow the law Congress passed and secure the border just as Texas has. Texas has taken a multifaceted approach to border security, implementing measures aimed at deterring illegal crossings. One of the most notable actions taken by the state is the installation of over 100 miles of razor wire barrier along key areas of the border. This physical barrier has proven effective in reducing illegal border crossings, as Governor Abbott proudly highlighted. They have ensured that uh, this entire park that we are in right now will not be an area that can be used to pass any more. Governor Abbott's reference to the park underscores the significance of Texas's efforts to secure its borders. By fortifying areas prone to illegal crossings, the state has made it clear that it will not tolerate unauthorized entry. In addition to physical barriers, Texas has also increased the presence of law enforcement along the border. State troopers and National Guard units have been deployed to assist federal border patrol agents in their efforts to maintain order and prevent illegal crossings. This collaborative approach between state and federal authorities demonstrates demonstrates Texas's commitment to protecting its borders. Governor Abbott's strong words reflect the frustration felt by many Texans who believe that their safety and security are at risk due to the influx of migrants. But Governor Abbott's claims of Texas' right to protect its borders go beyond mere rhetoric. Governor Abbott's stance has garnered support from fellow GOP governors who have joined him in demanding action from the Biden administration. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, in particular, called out President Biden for his failures in addressing the border crisis. 
because of his failures, Governor Abbott is having to step up. Governors from across the country are having to step up and do the job of the federal government because they simply won't. The frustration expressed by Governor Huckabee Sanders highlights the growing sentiment among Republican leaders that the federal government is not doing enough to secure the border. In response to the escalating situation, President Biden spoke with Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador to discuss the challenges at their shared border. While the leaders committed to continuing their productive partnership, it remains to be seen whether this conversation will lead to any concrete solutions. Governor Abbott's unwavering determination to protect Texas's borders sets the stage for a continued clash between state and federal powers. As the battle rages on, the consequences of this feud could have far-reaching implications for both Texas and the nation as a whole. Since the beginning of Governor Abbott's term, Texas has taken a strong stance on border security. With the influx of undocumented migrants crossing the border, Abbott has deployed the Texas National Guard to maintain control and protect the state's territory. This move has drawn criticism from the Biden administration, which argues that Texas is overstepping its constitutional authority. The Biden administration, through a cease and desist letter, demanded that Texas relinquish control of the southern border. However, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton rejected this demand, citing the facts and the law that support Texas's actions. Paxton argues that Texas has the constitutional authority to defend its territory and will continue to do so in court. The legal arguments put forth by both sides are complex. The Biden administration contends that Texas's control of the border is unconstitutional and interferes with federal immigration enforcement. They argue that immigration is a federal matter and that Texas's actions are impeding the federal government's ability to carry out its responsibilities. On the other hand, Texas argues that it has the right to protect its borders and ensure the safety of its citizens. They maintain that the federal government has failed in its duty to secure the border, forcing Texas to take matters into its own hands. Governor Abbott has repeatedly expressed concerns about the influx of undocumented migrants and the potential threats they pose to public safety. The implications of this ongoing standoff are far-reaching. It not only highlights the deep divide between the Biden administration and Republican-led states like Texas, but also raises questions about the balance of power between the federal government and the states. The outcome of this conflict could have significant implications for future immigration policies and the relationship between the federal government and state governments. Critics argue that Texas's control of the border is causing unnecessary hardship for migrants and hindering their ability to seek asylum. They claim that the Texas National Guard's presence is intimidating and creates a hostile environment for those fleeing violence and persecution. However, supporters of Governor Abbott's actions argue that Texas is simply enforcing the law and protecting its citizens from potential threats. One particular area of contention in the ongoing conflict between the Biden administration and Governor Greg Abbott is a Texas park located on the U.S. side of the Rio Grande. The Texas park, under the order of Governor Abbott, came under state control as part of the efforts to secure the border. This park has become a popular crossing point for undocumented migrants, attracting the attention of both federal authorities and Texas officials. The Biden administration, seeking entry to the park, clashed with Texas officials, leading to a series of disturbing incidents. One such incident occurred when Border Patrol agents attempted to assist a group of migrants who were struggling to cross the river. Shockingly, Texas officials physically barred the agents from providing aid, resulting in a tragic outcome. According to the Justice Department, a woman and two children drowned during this incident. The loss of innocent lives sent shockwaves throughout the nation and intensified the already heated debate surrounding immigration policies. Texas officials, however, denied any wrongdoing in the deaths and argued that the drownings occurred before Border Patrol agents were denied entry. They maintained that their actions were in line with their duty to protect the state's borders. However, a Texas public radio report uncovered that at least two other migrants remained in distress. At the time, federal agents arrived, raising questions about the response and the potential for more lives to be at risk. The Justice Department, in an attempt to clarify the sequence of events, provided information to the Supreme Court. They emphasized that it is impossible to determine what might have happened if Border Patrol had been granted access to the area. They argued that Border Patrol would have had the opportunity to fulfill its responsibilities and assist its counterparts in the Mexican government with the rescue mission. However, Texas's actions made it impossible for them to do so. The tragic incidents at the Texas Park have further strained the relationship between Texas and the Biden administration.
administration, the Biden administration has condemned Abbott's immigration policies as inhumane and dangerous, while Abbott and Texas officials maintain that they are enforcing the law and protecting their territory. The drownings have become a focal point in the debate, with critics arguing that Texas's actions contributed to the loss of innocent lives. That brings us to the end of this video. For more interesting videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.